on First Things First. So on Saturday, the Lakers finally got their guy, Anthony Davis. As you can imagine, fans were big excited. Check this out. A mural of Anthony Davis has already popped up in L.A. An artist by the name of Gustavo Zermeno pulled an all-nighter getting this thing done. Also, Magic chimed in on the trade via Twitter, saying, quote, great job by owner Jeannie Boss bringing Anthony Davis to the Lakers, Laker Nation. <laughs> the Lakers are back in a championship hunt. Congratulations to the entire organization. I know LeBron James has a big smile on his face. I'm loving this. But wait, Magic also tweeted, oh. great trade, Rob Palenka. Job well done. Oh, I didn't see that one, because that was the, very interesting in the first one. Did he Jeannie left Boss in there negotiating. Well, Magic, if that's great. in real time. First tweet goes yeah. out. Boom, he loves his tweet. The Reddit. Yep. Oh, I forgot the snake in the grass. Nice. Rob Palenka, let me yep. get, let me find Second one tweet. <laughs> By the way, I'll, a side bet anyone at this table, that mural, unlike the LeBron murals, Will does not, not get, get defaced. defaced. Does not, the Kobe fans don't dislike Anthony Davis. They'll let that one stand. That's a, that guy stayed up all night, the night afterwards, to get that done. That's a good looking mural. I, I think I'm going to be in LA in the next couple months. So let me tell you something. I'm getting ready to climb up on there, and I'm getting ready to wax You're on gonna wax, wax off. Leave. I'm going to get that right. AD, let's do this, man. We can't be at the parade, man, with that. No, let's do, bro. We need, we need that. That's, that's a, 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 a baby type. Back to the NBA now. AD is heading to the Lakers. According to reports, the Celtics wanted to get him but refused to include Jason Tatum in the deal, and that was the difference there. Nick, what's the future looking like for Boston after not getting Anthony Davis? Very similar to what they've looked like ever since the big three in Boston broke down. LeBron ended them, and they left. They'll be good. They won't be good enough. They'll, they'll, they'll make the playoffs, be happy to win a playoff series, and that's the ceiling for them. And by the way, no change on the horizon coming. And so that's where Boston is, and it should be a bit of a case study, if not a cautionary tale for other teams, overvaluing their own assets rather than trying to go get what a, a difference making player. All right, it's obvious they're not as good as the top teams in the East now, that being um, Milwaukee and also Philadelphia. But right now, are they better than the Pacers? After free agency, they get D'Angelo Russell. Are they better than Orlando? Best record um, after the All-Star break. Are they better than those teams? When you get put in that type of question, let you know that they should have traded. They, they have to do something. And you're high on Brooklyn as well, and we'll see what they do. All right, finally, AD got his wish. He'll be joining LeBron on the Lakers. <laughs> the price, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and three future first-round picks, including that number four overall this year. Nick, did the Lakers overpay for AD? No. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah they did. Okay, go ahead. But so what? Like, what do you know? If you got a Picasso, you got something, the Mona Lisa, these things are rare. Man, Anthony Davis is a great basketball player. And if you look at where they are now, if the Lakers, if, let's go back to last year and say LeBron's not a free agent. The Lakers are trying to change their franchise. Do they make the same trade? LeBron's not there? Absolutely. And now you have LeBron James, and now all of a sudden you are a legitimate tighter contender compared to some paper champion. Oh, well, how's this guy do? Well, how's this guy going to do? Anthony Davis needs to be paired with another superstar and one that has playoff experience. Anthony Davis has everything but playoff experience. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Lakers, how they built their franchise and their branding, they needed a young superstar next to the king as they transition to the next decade. And so for me, you have to be able to make this trade. He's one of the bright young players. These players don't come available too often. How much would you trade for a top five player in the league? Well, that's the thing. And so that's why my instant reaction was no. They paid a premium. They didn't get a bargain. This wasn't, you didn't get him for 30 cents on the dollar or 50 cents on the dollar the way the, the Raptors got Kawhi from San, or the, mm -hmm. the way the Raptors got Kawhi from San Antonio. But they didn't overpay because you can't overpay. They, what does Steve Ballmer say when he bought the LA Clippers? There's only 30 of these only in the world. Only mm -hmm. one was available. There's only seven guys in the league, seven, that can be the best guy on a championship team, that can be a league MVP. The Lakers now have two of them. So mm -hmm. is that, will Brandon Ingram or Lonzo Ball, either one ever make an all-star team? Maybe. Will Josh Hart ever be a starter on a quality team? Maybe. The picks they gave up, we know the number four pick, we know that's valuable, right? Mm -hmm. And then they gave up the 2021 pick, 
and a 2024 pick with one pick swap. Here's what the Lakers kept, because here's what I find a little odd. There are certain people that were very, very boisterous on this point. Man, the Lakers, the Knicks can trump their offer, the Celtics can trump their offer. They, they don't have that great assets, their young players aren't that good. And those same people, their response on Twitter this weekend was, my God, the Lakers got hosed. It's almost as if they, were, they had an agenda on this. Here's what they kept, the Lakers. They're best of their young players. Yeah. Maybe yes. not the one with the most potential, but the one that's the most productive up to this point. And I, the best fit for the other two players. Absolutely. They also have draft first round picks in 20, 22, and 23. The, though it's a swap in 23. The way this goes sideways is maybe, maybe in 2025, if Anthony Davis does not re-sign with the Lakers a second time, and if LeBron's mm. retired, and they haven't built the team right, then that 2025 pick might be one. They're like, ah, we wish we could have that back. Won't matter if they're hanging banners. And right. so just, just real quick, the, the comparison people are going to make, see, is the Nets Celtics trade, which was three first and these pick swaps. The Nets traded for Kevin Garnett, who was 37 years old. He averaged six and a half points his first year in Brooklyn. He played 96 total games there. They traded for Paul Pierce, who was 36 years old. He played 75 games in Brooklyn. The reason that trade went terribly was because the great players you thought you were getting were old and not great anymore. Anthony Davis is 26 years old and guaranteed to be great. How good are those draft picks going to be when Anthony Davis is on your team and LeBron's on your team? Not very good. But also the rumor was the Lakers wanted to hold on to Kyle Kuzma and we all thought, well, if the Pelicans want Kyle Kuzma, give him Kyle Kuzma if you want AD. They keep Kyle Kuzma, which you say fits in great with these two superstars they have now. And you're okay yes. with who they gave away? I mean, I love Kuz because Kuz is a better shooter. I think that he can be a little bit of a liability. I believe he'll improve as a perimeter defender, especially now that they have Anthony Davis. But his ability to be able to shoot the basketball and build score at a higher level, and he's a bigger guy to go with LeBron and AD, I think he's a perfect fit. Now. And there are two things, points on Kuz quick. One is his rookie year shot 37% from three. Last year, he just all of a sudden fell off the map on open spot up threes. The Lakers believe, I believe that was an aberration. Those were shots he hit in college, shots he hit his first season. The other reason to keep Kuzma is, these, while, while Ingram and Ball are cheap, they are still number two picks of the draft, making eight, nine million bucks. Kuzma makes like two million dollars. So he, his contract is also incredibly valuable. So they kept their best player. They have a first round pick three of the next four years. Right. And they got Anthony Davis. The idea that that's overpaying, I, I just, I, I can't even believe people think it. All right, let's talk about the other big story in the NBA now. The decision Kawhi Leonard has in front of him. TMZ Sports spotted the newly crowned Toronto Raptors celebrating their title in Las Vegas. And as soon as the euphoria settles, that Canadian passion will turn towards Kawhi and his free agent plans, if it hasn't already. According to Fred Van Vliet, the team has done their part to recruit him. He came here and did what he was supposed to do. So he brought this city a championship. And, you know, I think he's earned his, his freedom and his career to do what he wants to do. And we'll all respect and, and, you know, admire him. And if he's on another team, then we'll just have to kick his ass next year. But uh, ho <laughs> hopefully he'll be back. Fred, keeping it honest and real. See, where do you think Kawhi Leonard ends up next season? Well, Fred is right. And not only the country of Canada, but the Toronto Raptors that they have done everything the right way. Um, Kawhi and his team, they couldn't be happier. Also with the championship, that was just kind of the cherry on the top. When they got past Philadelphia, you could say that they felt really, really good about what they had accomplished. Coming there, load management, and realizing that where Kawhi was as a basketball player, they were very, very confident that he had returned to form. But as far as free agency goes, I would say, and because of the moments, the moments that what they've had the last month and what the chemistry that he's developed with that team, you have to say Toronto that they are the favorite. They can also pay him the most. Great experience for him there. The doctors that he had working with him, their collaboration with the doctors for the Raptors, the load management situation where he missed um, 22 games during the regular season, how it played off. He played through all the pain in the playoffs, having one of the greatest playoff runs that we had ever seen. But it's going to go like this. Toronto, they are the favorite because of what happened. 
But Kawhi sent a message to everyone else. I'm not in, I, had, I don't have interest in just joining a super team or something like that. Just give me some ball players, and I believe that we can take on the NBA. This didn't change because he won. This is exactly what I was saying last year when people were talking about trading to Kawhi. When they're talking about, oh, is it the Clippers or is it the Lakers? Is it LeBron? All this. No, he's not into that. But the Raptors should be the favorite, and then it's going to go like this in no order. Both teams in New York, that being the Knicks and the Brooklyn Nets, they will both get wow. a sit down interview with Kawhi. Also, the Los Angeles Lakers will be a part of the discussions. Yes, he will sit down with them and the Clippers. So Clippers, Lakers, Nets, Knicks, and the Raptors, those are the five teams that will be involved in the Kawhi Leonard sweepstakes. So there's five teams that have a legitimate chance. I think people are going to be surprised to see those two New York teams on that list. Because what we had heard was it's Los Angeles. Once being Los Angeles, either team in Los Angeles, you're telling us that, that both New York teams, both LA teams, and of course Toronto. And here's the, to me, the most noteworthy part of it. Because of what he just proved, if the follow-up is where's he the best fit, it's great fit everywhere. This is what Kawhi Leonard has proven. Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, one, you know, the, the Kevin Durant we know, those are three guys in this league, maybe the top three guys in this league, that we know unequivocally, put them in any situation, their team will be a playoff team. Put the right talent around them, their team will be a championship contender. Like that is the level of player he is, which is why he could look at the Knicks, who right now, they had the worst record in basketball last season. They were clearly clearing the decks for a player like Kawhi Leonard. The Nets, who were an up and coming team, but not a championship level team, similar with the Clippers. And then there's the Lakers. And the Lakers, one is interesting, would take a lot of salary cap machinations. They would have to go back to the table with New Orleans, try to convince them to delay the trade. But let's just say the Lakers could clear up the money. While Kawhi doesn't need a super team, the idea of playing with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, two guys he has tremendous respect for, mm -hmm. I would imagine he would at least have to consider being able to do that in the part of the country he's from. And then... Toronto, where they just won a title, the, the one thing that I'm curious about is there's been a lot of speculation about will Kawhi sign a short-term deal in Toronto. Tell me if you disagree. That one would surprise me only because Kawhi turned down a ton of money to stay in San Antonio. He would then be turning down a ton of money to sign the full max free agency. And when you are a player who has dealt with some lingering injuries, the idea of, and you just see KD tears Achilles, Clay Thompson tears ACL, to leave 100 plus million on the table to sign a short term deal, that would surprise me. I don't know if you feel differently. I, I would imagine wherever Kawhi signs, he's gonna sign the full either four or five year max. I mean, they literally have been taking it game by game. I mean, what's Kawhi's availability from a health standpoint? Game number one, what does he feel like game number two? Game number three to game number six, you could see in the interviews, that's the first time that Key was able to relax. So now they will start the process. Not gonna be any tampering stuff, they're gonna start the process. He's gonna have a great time at the parade today. I'm sure he's gonna thank the Toronto Raptors Canada, but it's gonna be Kawhi Leonard, business as usual, and those will be the five teams that will be involved. I think with Kawhi, it's interesting because with KD, we talk so much about maybe he wants to go out and see if he can win on his own. But you don't get the sense from Kawhi that he either needs to play with someone else or needs to mm -hmm. not play with someone else. So those four teams offer a whole, like four different scenarios of where he'd be. At the Clippers, he'd be the guy. You know, if KD comes to the Knicks, he'd be with KD. If he goes to the Lakers, he joins them. So I think it's four different five different situations where you can either be with a superstar or not, but he doesn't seem like that's something that's important to Well, him. and this is the freedom that this championship gives him. Let's say, just for the sake of argument, he were to pick the Lakers and they were able to clear the decks for it. No, he has what KD didn't have when with, he went to yep, the Warriors. Did it on his if own. KD had already won a title Dwayne in Wade. OKC, Dwayne Wade's a better example, because he had it. Yeah. Nobody, nobody questions D Wade's second two titles because he had already done it. Right. So now if Kawhi had gotten knocked out in the second round, if he had missed <laughs> that shot, they lose in overtime, and then he joins the Lakers, then people would say, okay, well, how? But he answered all those questions. Right. That's what a championship gives you. Just like you say, the Hall of Fame. What does the Hall of Fame do for me? It answers all the questions. How good was Chris Carter? Well, I'm a Hall of Famer. So that I don't have to have the debate about who's better, this, that, or the third. For Kawhi Leonard, the championship answers all the questions. No one can say he's ring chasing when he's the defender.